Please join me in the call to worship. Like the women at the tomb on the first Easter, we come out of our darkness and into the light. The stone has been rolled away. The one you are looking for has overcome the darkness. The tomb is empty. The one you are looking for has overcome death. The Christ is risen. 
You may be seated. Happy Easter. My name is Reverend Eric Strader, one of the pastors here, and we want to welcome you to First United Methodist Church. We have a short video to introduce. highlight you will find in your bulletin a tear off strip this is the way we are in relationship with you we would invite you to tear that off now because it's loud together <laughs> and then as the offering plates come by a little later you're invited to place those in the plates this is the way we get to know you if you are a visitor with us today we would love an opportunity to share a cup of coffee to hear your face story to ask how we can walk with you in the journey of life well, it is Easter, and there is nothing like an Easter Sunday morning. There is nothing like the brass and the choir and the chimes and the organ. It just has this energy, this buzz. There is nothing like the children who are absolutely on a sugar high right now, and they're going to crash in about 45 minutes, just so you know. There's nothing like your bright clothes and the sun outside and these beautiful, gorgeous spring flowers. And that first Easter was nothing like this. Nothing. It was dark. It was scary. It was at the dawn of the morning when those three women came to the tomb. We all know how the story is going to end, but the first time they did not. Our invitation today as we enter into this celebration is to pause and remember what it was like for those women so long ago as they came and experienced the resurrection of Jesus Christ.
Good morning. I am Reverend Carrie West, pastor of discipleship, one of the clergy on staff here at First United Methodist Church. It is my honor to invite you at this time to consider your investment at First United Methodist Church and to offer you opportunities for further engagement in our ministries and our life together as a church. The first thing I'd like to offer to you is a video uh, describing our upcoming sermon series. There's an old cultural mantra that's told. It goes like this. Give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you'll feed him for a lifetime. So don't give the man a fish. This is our cultural response to homelessness in our country. Unfortunately, we don't always respond immediately with compassion. Our first response as Christ followers has to be compassion. It has to offer grace. That has to be our starting point. But then what happens is we get caught in being overwhelmed that there are no easy solutions. We get stuck in that the problems that have created homelessness are vast and complex and we become numb to the situation. I hope you'll join us here at First United Methodist Church in April for a series about how grace can lead us home how we find healing and hope amidst our unhoused friends as they struggle in this world. I wanna remind you that every night in Colorado Springs, 900 to 1200 people do not have a place to sleep. We'll see you in April where grace can lead us all home. We look forward to seeing you in our upcoming series. As you leave today, you will notice there is a display that um, promotes our arts and theater camp. Uh, so please stop by and take a look at that for all the young people, especially this summer. This camp is a chance to learn more about God, Jesus, spirit, Bible, church, and some fun music. So please stop by and check that out and uh, put it on your calendars as well. This coming, uh, not this coming week, but the following week on Wednesday morning, the 10th, uh, we are partnering with our ministry partners, uh, Family Promise. They have their Breakfast of Hope fundraiser. I'll be hosting a couple of tables and would love to have any and all of you come and uh, take part in this fundraiser. It is a free breakfast. Mayor Yemi will also be speaking. Uh, and of course, we will be asked to give generously to this organization who uh, provides emergency shelter for families who are situationally unhoused. So you can get more information with the QR code. You can RSVP, but I can tell you there are plenty of seats, so you can just come and join us on that morning. Your offering this morning provides for all of these ministries, for all the work that we do within these walls and far beyond. And we thank you that uh, you are here, and for your generosity this morning, I invite our ushers to come forward to receive this morning's offering. <laughs>
please join me in our affirmation of faith. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Sometimes we feel like peace is hard to find. We look at the news, we look through our Facebook, and we see that there are many non-peaceful things and people in our world. But we hope this morning you came thinking that this might be a place where you could find peace among the people of God. I invite you to greet those around you with the peace of Christ. And as you're doing that, I would invite the children to come down for a time for kids. We'll gather here at the bottom of the stairs. You can hold on to it for now. Did anybody else not get a worship bag when you came in? Worship bag, anybody? Okay, you can have one as an older kid. I was making sure all the younger kids had one first. Okay, very good. All right, so today is what? Easter. Easter, that's right. If I could get you guys to turn, we're gonna need to look at this board. So today is Easter, and it's a very special day in the life of the church, but there are a couple of things things that had to happen in order for us to be able to have Easter. Some other things, some other special days had to happen. So um, I really like playing games. Do you guys like playing games? Yeah, yeah very good. We're going to play a game. It's called I Spy. Anybody ever played I Spy before? All right, very good. So we're going to do some I Spy to help us learn about the things that happened leading up to Easter. Okay, so we're going to go back one week to last week. Last week's called Palm Sunday. And so I wonder, I spy with my little eye something that teaches us about Palm Sunday. What do we see? Girls, if you guys want to come up so you can see a little bit better. Eloise, if you could kind of sit down so they can see better. Um, okay, what do we spy? I spy what helps us know about Palm Sunday. The palm, bingo. There's one other one. What else? The, the, donkey. the donkey. That's right. So they um, wave their palm branches because that is a sign of royalty and of victory. And that's what they did for kings. But then Jesus rode in on a donkey to remind people that he was a different kind of king. All right, moving on to Monday. Monday is a little bit of a lesser known story. But Monday's become known as the day that Jesus got kind of upset he went to the temple, which was a big church, and he uh, saw that they had turned the church into like a big mall, basically. They were selling things when they were supposed to be praising God and praying. So he got kind of mad. So I spy with my little eye something that Jesus used to express his disappointment. Okay, what do you, what do you think back here? What do you think? Got any guesses? It's actually probably hard for you to see because it's at the bottom. What else? What do you think? What do you think right here? 
the basket. That's right. Awesome job. Yeah, so he started turning the tables over, and that is a basket that had pe- things in it that people might sell. So that's a really good one. Okay, on Tuesday, Jesus did a lot of preaching and teaching and telling stories. He told a bunch of parables during that time. So I spy, we're going to talk about that one in a little bit. I spy with my little eye people who preach and teach and tell stories. Bob and Larry, yes, I think that is probably right. The Veggie Tales do preach and teach and tell stories. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what else? Any other thoughts? What do you think? These people, that's exactly right. Pastor Eric, Pastor Nancy, Pastor Amy, oop, that's me, and Pastor Carrie, that's right. We're not exactly as good at telling stories as Jesus, but we are pretty good. All right, so next up on Wednesday, there is not a lot of information in Scripture about what happened on Wednesday, but I have a guess, something that I think Jesus might have done. So I spy with my little eye something that Jesus might have done on Wednesday. What do we think? Guesses. You were at nine. That's cheating. <laughs> okay. What, what do you think? The toilet roll because he used the restroom. The toilet roll because he used the restroom is possible. He, maybe he ate some pizza. I think it's this one. I'm going to go with this one. I think it's feathers because feathers are in pillows, and I think Jesus might have rested because he was tired from a busy couple of days, and he knew that the next days were going to be crazy. You made a pillow? I, can I have your pillow? I'm kind of tired. I want to rest. Okay. Um, Thursday. Yes, Jocelyn. Yes. Oh, yeah, he totally could. He could turn um, pizza for pizza for 5000 I love that. Okay. Thursday, he uh, gathered together with his friends, and they had a meal. They were celebrating Passover, and he did something for the first time. I spy with my little eyes something that we use what Jesus did for the first time. The carrot. <laughs> it does kind of look like a carrot. It's bread and grapes. That's right. Yes. He gave a communion for the first time. And you're absolutely right. During Jesus' day, it would have been wine. And so we use juice um, for our communion today. All right. On Friday, things got very, very sad. And something happened before the morning of Friday. I spy with my little eye this one right here. You're exactly right. That is the one that goes with Thursday night. Does anybody know? What's your guess? What is it? Is that a, is it a chicken? It's not quite a chicken. It's a rooster. That's right. So the scripture says, what? Oh my goodness. Do you want to do the rest of the time for kids? That was amazing, Eloise. That is exactly right. The people that had been hanging out with Jesus were having a difficult time because they were scared of what was going to happen to them. And Peter, one of his friends, was so scared that he said that he didn't know who Jesus was. And before the morning when the rooster crowed, that's exactly right. Okay, Friday got things really, really sad. And I spy with my little eye something that reminds us about Jesus' death. Yep, call it out. What's this one? Yeah, Yeah, what's that one? The crown of thorns. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a crown of thorns. It definitely does look like a nest. And they were actually making fun of Jesus. They put a crown of thorns on his head because they were calling him the king of the Jews, and they were kind of making fun of him. And so that reminds me that when people make fun of me, people even made fun of Jesus. What you got, Jocelyn? Also the cross. Exactly. Yep. 
they did laugh at him. They totally did. So that reminds us that people laughed at Jesus, so we'll get through it when people laugh at us. All right, very good. Saturday, not too much in scripture about Saturday either, so we have to kind of guess. He was in the tomb. I saw with my little eye what the tomb might have been like. The spider, there might have been spiders in the tomb. I think that's a reasonable conjecture. Uh, what about a chihuahua? Do you think there was a chihuahua in the tomb? No, probably not. This is a piece of sausage. It's probably not that one. How about this one right here? What do you think that one means? Jocelyn? Dark. Darkness. That's exactly right. I think it was very dark in there. I do have a chihuahua for a pet. All right, last one. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We are back to today where we started. Easter, I spy with my little eye. Things that remind us of Easter. What you got? About somebody back over here? What you got? The pom-poms do look like Easter eggs. I love it. Maybe somebody over here. Do you, yeah, what, what you got? The candy. Yep, that is definitely an awesome part about Easter. Up here we have, um, Jocelyn, what do, you, what do you like? Um, the flowers. The flowers, yes, for sure. New life. The, that's exactly right. Buds are blooming. And yeah, there's a lot of flowers. Up here, there's also one that I really like. It says, spoiler, God wins. I like that one because it reminds me that when I'm sad and I feel like I am in a dark tomb like this and people have been making fun of me and people have been doing things to hurt me, that if it is still sad, then it's not over because God always wins. That's right. God always wins. Well, thank you for going on this walk um, with me through um, Holy Week, and I appreciate it very much. There are still some extra worship bags back in the back, and so if you did not get one of those, please um, ask your parent if you can go back there and get one for you. All right, let's say a prayer. We don't often do repeat after me prayers, but I'd like to do one today. Here we go. Dear Jesus, Jesus. thank you for all you taught us. Thank you for loving us. Help us to live in your ways. And help us to love others. And all God's people said as loud as I possibly could, amen. All right, amen. Happy Easter, friends.
Reverend Nancy Boswell, the pastor of Caring Ministries here on staff at First United Methodist Church. I think that today we are supposed to feel joy, but I'm realistic enough to know that not everybody here feels that. And that there are times that we're caught in the worries of the world. So let us confess what is in our hearts to the God that loves us. Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share the joy of the resurrection, but we are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us when we find it is more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Forgive us when we choose our own stability and comfortability over telling the world the tomb is empty. Forgive us for not sharing the good news. Now let us enter into a time of silent prayer. Hear these words of assurance. Christ is risen. Mary calls out, I have seen the Lord. We have seen Christ too in every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life in this world. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you. Amen. Today, Easter Sunday, we give thanks to you, God, because the light of your love overcomes darkness and endures forever. We find ourselves in times that feel like we are staring into an empty tomb. Your love, Lord, calls us and shows us the empty tomb is not a place of fear, but of resurrection. God, you are our strength, our song and our salvation. Your love never quits. We are tested by tragedy, disaster, poor choices, and your love endures. Lord, we are grateful for your love through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask that others see Christ when you use us as his hands and feet to show others we love them. Give us words of forgiveness. Give us words of truth. Give us words that help us stand firm and restore life. 
God, your love never quits, and this day we pray the love of peace to all who are in conflict, war, and disagreement. May your love surround those who are ill and need healing. Surround those whose life is coming to a close and need peace. May your love flow through all of us when we insist on our own way rather than a loving way and the way you are calling us to live. God, your love endures forever. And together we pray as Jesus taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. invite you to hear the words from the Apostle Paul's letter to the people in the city of Corinth. Friends, let me go over the message with you one final time. The first thing I did was place before you that which was placed so emphatically before me, that the Messiah died for our sins exactly as Scripture tells it that he was buried, that he was raised from death on the third day, again, exactly as scripture says, that he presented himself alive to Peter, then to his closest followers, and later to more than 500 of his followers all at the same time. Most of them are still around, although a few have since died that he then spent time with James and the rest of those he commissioned to represent him, and that he finally presented himself alive to me. It was fitting that I bring up the rear. I don't deserve to be included in that inner circle, as you know well. Having spent all those early years trying my best to stamp God's church right out of existence, but because God was so gracious, so very generous, here I am. May this reading add to our understanding of God's purposes for the church and our community. And now I invite you to please stand in body or spirit for the gospel acclamation. Hear the gospel story from Mark's gospel. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spice, brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, 
they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. A word of God for a people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God.
mentor of mine, Reverend Ann Rosebrock, was officiating a funeral. The processional left the church and they went to the cemetery and Ann drove her own car to the inurnment. The casket was taken from the hearse and it was placed on the casket lowering device. Now I need to tell you that Ann's fashion can best be described as a professional skirt suit combo in really bright colors, pink and purple and turquoise. Her style is relevant to the story because her skirt had no pockets. And Anne had this giant wad of keys, keys for her house, keys for the church. There are even keys for her car. Remember when cars had actual keys? So flashback to the cemetery. Anne tosses this giant wad of keys to the ground, but instead of just plopping down, it bounced across the astroturf and down into the tomb. She just looks at these keys and thinks, well, we're going to have to finish the service first. So she finished with the family and, and began to wait as they left. The cemetery workers, who were a mix of non-English speaking Burmese and Latino man, men, came over. And Anne asked them to move the casket out of the way and then to get into the tomb to get her keys. And in any language, it is easy to understand, no way, lady. They were not getting in that tomb at all. And so Anne, who wanted to go home, shimmied down into the tomb, got the keys, and those men lifted her out. How many of you would have gone into the tomb? How many of you would have called a spouse to bring you another set of keys and said, those are done? <laughs> How can we believe the Easter story is not over yet? when we see our world engulfed in such conflict. The women had gotten up so very early that morning to gather their supplies. They still were in shock. How did this happen? How did it come to this? The message had gotten so tangled up with the politics of Rome. Jesus had challenged people of power, and now he was dead. And it would be the women who would show up in the darkness of death. These women in early church writings are called the three Marys. Mary, the mother of Jesus and James. Mary Salome, the mother of the Zebedee brothers. And Mary from the town of Magdalene. Now, we should be clear, too often, Mary Magdalene is either referenced as a character who had seven demons cast out of her, she could have been a woman of the night, or she's been fictionalized as Jesus' spouse. Here's what we know about Mary. She stood by Jesus' side during the crucifixion. And while John's self-named gospel places himself at the cross, Neither Matthew, Mark, or Luke do. They only place Mary Magdalene. And so we know she is a central figure. We know that the other Marys, as they are making their way to the tomb, are leaning on her for support, for strength, for her bravery. As Mary leads those mothers, there has to be so much that could have stopped them. I mean, there's a Roman soldier outside the tomb. What if he decides he's going to chase them away? What if he says, no, you can't enter? And still, she went. There's a giant stone block that could have stopped them. How are they going to move it out of the way? Should, should they go back and get one of the disciples? Or maybe find Joseph of Arimathea, who gave the tomb, to help them move it out of the way. And still, she went. There could be roving crowds of Jesus haters milling about Jerusalem. The people were so full of rage on Friday. Are they still there? Should the women turn back? And still, they went. There is a reason. All the Gospels place Mary Magdalene at the center of the resurrection story. She is the symbol of bravery in our scary world. But what if, 
what if the spices were actually a cover for her to go to the tomb? I mean, the truth is, she's coming to anoint his body, but could Mary have understood deeper than anyone else? What drives Mary to the tomb that morning? While the disciples are all over here huddled in fear in the upper room, what if Mary still went because she wasn't quite ready for it to be over? While the rest of Jerusalem has written Jesus off as dead, what if Mary still went because she remembers what Jesus said about the resurrection? While the disciples are packing their bags, getting ready to leave town and go back to their lives, what if Mary still went to the tomb because she wanted to see? The message of Easter for us is not we're all going to heaven now. The resurrection of Jesus does not just mean there is life after death. The Easter story means violence does not win. And that the end is not about the powers of this world, but about the powers of the almighty God. And how one disciple believed and still went to the tomb. Mary is the disciple we need today. We need more Mary in our lives because Mary shows up. She didn't hide in the upper room like all the men. She doesn't avoid the pain. She doesn't let her fear hold her back. Mary shows up. And she says to us, Despite the fear, despite the violence in the world, it is still always worth it to love God. Despite the violence and the fear in the world, it is still worth it to love people. Despite the darkness, it is always, always worth it to still go to the tomb. I don't know what Mary would say about the violence of our world today. To people in the Ukraine who are simply trying to make it through a night, to young adults at a dance festival in Israel who suffered inexplicable horror, to children who are seeking shelter in, Gaza, in a Gaza hospital to escape shelling. But I know that the brave disciple called Mary would be there with them. And that's our invitation today, not to turn away from our world, but to be ready to still love God's people. So be like Mary. Stand at the cross amidst the evil and the violence and still love people. Be like Mary. Choose to go to the tomb with all your uncertainty and all your fear and all your doubt because you believe something more is possible. Be like Mary, the first evangelist, to proclaim to the world, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
Would you please thank our musicians this afternoon morning? We want to offer an invitation. If your family would like to come down and take pictures, we have designed this specifically for that purpose. So please do that. If you purchased flowers, don't forget your flowers. If you didn't purchase flowers, don't forget some flowers. There's plenty of plants to go around. We also want to highlight there's a parting gift for you as you leave to remind you to go into the world and be brave like Mary. Have the courage to face our fears, to go into the tomb and tell others of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For he is risen. Amen. Oh, no.